All right, this video uh, is going to cover the vasculature of the upper extremity, sort of by breaking this into pieces. First, we're going to talk about the axillary artery, and then we'll go into uh, brachial artery and some of its branches. And then we'll get down into the forearm and then all the way down to the wrist and hand in those sections. I'll just add the uh, vasculature in with um, each, uh, each sections or each region's video as we do them. But I want to cover the axillary uh, vasculature and then uh, one aspect of the upper extremity vasculature in general. So let's talk about that first. This is going to be the uh, superficial uh, veins. So veins are going to run, uh, veins or the venous system is going to return blood to the circulation, systemic uh, uh, central circulation from the uh, tissues. And in the upper extremity, you're going to start all the way out with digital veins. And you have these little... Um, intercapitular and metacarpal veins and it's going to form this dorsal the dorsal venous arch arches along the back of the hand you see some of these little uh, metacarpal little intercapitular veins from the digital veins into that dorsal venous arch on my hand and the arch is going to continue back in two uh, main veins and when my arm is out to the side okay so in anatomic position, and I bring my hand up so it's out uh, lateral, like I, this, like my limb buds grow out. You can think of the veins as running one on the, the lateral surface, or in this case, the superior surface by my head, and one on the base of the arm, uh, upper extremity, or medial aspect. Okay, and well, I won't even draw them, I'll just show you. So the vein that's going to... Um, it's going to start out here in the dorsal venous arch, and it's going to come around on the thumb or radial side, uh, lateral side. It's going to be come all the way up and run up your bicep. That's called the cephalic vein. Okay, right? so let's draw a little guy. All right, a little demonstration. Here's the arm. There's his shoulder. There's his smiley face. Okay, up, doo -doo -doo -doo. and then there's the torso. That is amazing. So, uh, digital veins, dorsal venous arch, uh, metacarpal veins, intercapitular veins, look at that in the back. And then coming around the thumb side, this vein is going to come all the way up and it's going to disappear through the clavipectoral fascia in a little area, you'll notice it right away, it's a great landmark called the deltopectoral triangle. It's got the, uh, and the medial edge of the anterior head of the deltoid as its lateral part, the lateral edge of the clavicular head of the pec major as its medial part, and then a little bit of the clavicle as its base. And you'll see that vein kind of disappear right there. It just sort of ducks into the body through that, uh, that deltopectoral triangle, a uh, little landmark. That's the cephalic vein, All right, cephalic vein. Then there's another vein that's gonna come around from the, the dorsal venous arch where these all start. And it's gonna work its way back up on the medial aspect of the, the forearm, crossing the elbow. And then it will stop or disappear somewhere about mid, um, right about where my color stops, uh, midway up the, the brachium on the medial surface. And that is, since that the base of the arm is the basilic vein. Cephalic vein, cephalic meaning uh, headward or toward the head. So like I talked about those limb buds growing out in the fetus, that vein develops on the lateral or superior aspect in this drawing, or the, the basilic is the vein, the main vein coming back on the, the base of the arm or the medial aspect of the upper limb. The basilic vein is gonna dive deep through that brachial fascia and, and go in a little, uh, a little earlier to the deeper axillary vein than the cephalic vein does. Now there's one, well there's a few, but there's a major um, bridge that crosses the cephalic vein to the basilic vein here in the um, elbow region, and this is the anti-cubital vein. And this one is important because that's where you're gonna see uh, a lot of, there's my anti-cubital vein poking up right there. I don't know if you can see that, or if you need to, that's where you put a needle to um, draw blood, typically. So those are the superficial structure, uh, um, venous structures of the upper limb, super easy. If you were in an anatomy uh, dissection course with me and we're in the cadaver lab, I don't bother much even identifying those because 
their superficial veins are going to be removed with a cutaneal um, layer. So we don't spend a lot of time on those. It's just kind of handy as a reference to know where they're at. Let's get into the vasculature of the upper extremity. Quick review. Quick review. Heart. Right? That's exactly what it looks like uh, anatomically. The heart is going to have in the systemic or left ven left uh, circulation, left side cardiac circulation, it's going to eject from the left ventricle and through the aortic arch, and then the arch is going to continue down as the thoracic aorta and then to the abdominal aorta going down through the diaphragm. But importantly for upper extremity, there are three branches off of the aortic arch. We're going to be moving um, anatomic position, looking right at me. We're going to move right to left. The uh, first one off right here is called the brachiocephalic artery, right? Or you say brachiocephalic trunk. Uh, I prefer just to say artery. Moving left, you're going to have the left common carotid artery. And then moving further left, this third one here is going to be the left subclavian artery. Now the brachiocephalic trunk on the right, this is one of the one of those instances where the body doesn't have perfect um, lateral symmetry. The brachiocephalic trunk will almost immediately diverge into a right common carotid artery here and a right subclavian artery, okay? And uh, common carotid artery is going to go up through the neck and supply the, uh, the head, neck and head. And subclavian arteries are exactly like they sound like. They're going to run deep to your clavicle. And then they're going to ultimately end up out in the um, upper extremity. So this is what we're going to talk about coming off the right subclavian artery, which is a branch of the brachiocephalic trunk or a brachiocephalic artery. You don't have to say right brachiocephalic trunk because there is no left brachiocephalic trunk. And then uh, the corresponding structures on the other side are left common carotid and left subclavian. All right, let's move on to just the vasculature of the armpit. So there's going to be an artery running like this. So let's say this is the right subclavian artery, okay? And it's coursing laterally and it's going to head down through uh, the, uh, to the upper extremity. It has to pass through that region in another video we did called the axilla or the armpit. And it's going to give off a lot of branches in the armpit. Um, and I'm going to show you a handy way to remember those, okay? The subclavian artery... ceases to be subclavian artery as soon as it passes the lateral border of the first rib. What I mean by that is you have to start thinking about arteries and vasculature as uh, a picture of them almost as roads. Somewhere where you live, there's a road that um, changes its name as it passes different um, landmarks or um, progressions across the map. For instance, here in Flint, we have uh, Corona Road, which is uh, M21, and it will move east to west, and downtown it's 2nd Street, and then it becomes uh, Court and Corona, and then Corona Road peels off, and then it continues west until it gets out to um, Shiawassee, then it's mainly M21, and then it gets to downtown Owasso, it's Main Street. It's got all these different names along its course, but it's the same road. Where it changes its name from right subclavian artery to right axillary artery is at the lateral border of the first rib. So as it crosses over that lateral border of the first rib, it now becomes axillary artery. It ends when it crosses the inferior border of the teres major muscle. Uh, I shouldn't say end. What happens now is its name, it now it becomes the brachial artery. We'll do a separate video on the brachial artery in the brachium uh, region. Okay? So the, I, I did a separate video of the vasculature of the axilla because if you've seen the axillary video already, you see how much muddy that was. It'd be a little hard to throw vasculature in there as well. 
So we're going to talk about the axillary artery running from the lateral border of the first rib to the inferior border of the teres major muscle, where it becomes brachial artery, right subclavian before that, right brachial after that region. Now there's a, a handy um, something you should know. Let's say this is my coracoid process of the scapula. I'm just going to put it there. There's a few things come off that. Um, coracobrachialis, short head of the biceps, brachii, pec, uh, minor. There's a few attachments on the coracoid process. We're going to be concerned with pec minor. Pec minor is going to run from that bone down to the ribs uh, two, three, four, and five, because it goes down like this, and five. And that muscle is going to give us uh, a very, um, as a landmark, especially in an anatomy lab when you're doing a practical exam and you're trying to identify these structures that all uh, look the same. We're going to divide our axillary artery up into three sections this way. Section one, section two, section three. Section one is going to be moving from medial to lateral or proximal to distal, however you want to think about it. Both are, are fine at this point. From the lateral border of the first rib, which is the initial segmentation of the axillary artery, to the medial edge of the pec minor. I'm going to label that so you don't forget what muscle that is. So from lateral border first rib to medial edge of pec minor, that is section one. Section two is deep to pec minor, so it's going to run from the medial edge of pec minor to the lateral edge of pec minor. That's section two. And then section three is going to run from the lateral edge of pec minor all the way down to the termination of the axillary artery segmentation at the inferior border of the teres major muscle. One, two, three sections. And now here's the really cool part. In section one, there's typically one branch that comes off that. Section two typically has two branches. Section three has three branches. So hopefully that makes sense. And then, um, I'm probably not going to label these on here. I'll say the names slowly and you can write them down um, and we'll go from there or I'll make a list. Starting with section one, that is called the superior thoracic artery, also known as the supreme thoracic artery or the highest thoracic artery. Call it, th those are weird and grandiose sounding. Some books say that. Call it the superior thoracic artery. Given its name, where do you think it's... it's um, the blood supply would be from the superior thoracic artery would be kind of the superior anterior aspect of the, the thorax and the torso. Superior thoracic artery is the branch off the first section of the axillary artery. Second section has two branches. The first branch is typically going to come up, is going to be on this section deep to the pec minor, but it's going to be um, tagged or identified coming around the medial, the medial edge of that muscle so you can see it and then part of it's going to pierce that clavipectoral fascia of the pec minor muscle we talked about in another video. This is the thoracoacromial trunk. Thoracoacromial trunk. The thoracoacromial trunk in turn has four branches. All right. So the thoracoacromial trunk, it's a trunk because it immediately differentiates usually into four distinct branches and those are going to be named by tracking them uh, trace them to where they go. You're going to have a clavicular branch, an acromial branch, a deltoid branch, and a pectoral branch. So you have the pectoral branch, the deltoid branch, the acromial branch, and the clavicular branch of the thoracoacromial trunk, first of the two branches of the second section of the axillary artery. Next, uh, peeking around the lateral border of the pec minor is going to be the lateral thoracic artery. Right? The lateral thoracic artery comes peaking around the lateral border of the pec minor. And if you had a superior thoracic artery, you're going to have a, a lateral thoracic artery to supply some of the lateral torso. So far, so good. First section, one branch. Second section, two branches. Thoracochromial trunks, the medial branch, typically. It gets four little branches of its own. And then the lateral uh, thoracic artery is going to come off of the, around the lateral border of the pec minor. Now we get down to the third section of the axillary artery, we've got three branches. This is, take advantage of this, this doesn't work anywhere else in the body, but this is kind of neat. Uh, three branches here. So let's talk about the two most distal, right toward uh, the, the, the um, teres major muscle, inferior aspect, low in the axilla. Uh, talk about those two branches first. 
there's going to be an anterior and a posterior with relation to the humerus or the the head of the humerus the bone of the arm there's going to be an anterior and a posterior circumflex humoral arteries anterior circumflex humoral artery and posterior circumflex humoral artery circumflex means going around these two will anastomose with each other on the um, around the head of the humerus that other branch up here uh, this is going to be the subscapular artery subscapular artery the subscapular artery is going to make two branches so it's going to go to the subscapular region subscapular fossa of the scapula and feed obviously part of the subscapular muscle but it's going to have two branches the one branch is going to be since it's directly across from the circumflex humoral artery pairing it's going to be the circumflex scapular artery circumflex scapular artery is a branch from the subscapularis artery and the other branch of the subscapularis artery is the thoracodorsal artery thoracodorsal artery is going to supply the latissimus dorsi and it runs through the armpit with the thoracodorsal nerve uh, which we'll see um, when i draw the vascular or the the neurologic contents of the axilla so um, there you go those are the simplified as best we can arterial structures of the axilla rewind the video as many times as you need uh, leave a comment below um, like turn on notifications and, and then uh, start looking for the other anatomy videos